I was very fortunate as an apprentice. I had quite a successful apprenticeship and then came out my time and um, went off the rails a little bit, but carried on riding when I say off the rails. I enjoyed a bit of the party life and got married and had a kid and uh, went to Mauritius and uh, enjoyed myself. And then um, I had a couple of stints with trainers, uh, Doug Campbell and Tony Finesse. And then I got the job with um, David Payne and that led seven years with David Payne and 10 years with uh, Mark de Kock. And uh, those 17 years, I must be honest, were absolutely uh, mind blowing. And uh, weather going the 2002 Vodacom, nervous to manage a big roll from the crowd. Yeah, and unfortunately, we drew f 16 out of 20 in those days in the July, and uh, I was a little bit further back than I wanted to be, and she was fighting a bit, but um, she turned for home, and she had like 14 lengths to make up, and uh, I lined her up, and I pinned her at a point in the corner, and I let her go, and she's the filly she was. I mean, she mowed them down, and as you know, she was the first filly to win the July after 30 odd years. I think Deezer and Aubrey Roberts were the last two, and yeah, she was a very special filly. Hippie Tombi coming in eventual. And as you know, she went on from there to three Dubai races, beating all the Colts all the time, and and a, and a win in America as well. So, yeah, she was she was a superstar. As a professional jockey, there are so many winning big races uh, all around the world. Uh, they all, all winners are, are great, but there are some, a few that do stick out, and they're normally the group ones in other countries. Yeah, I think I got younger and naughtier as I went along. Um, that's what my wife used to tell me. Opportunity. Any uh, more rides today? Yeah, um, yeah Laf, I got two more. One on the way home in my car. Yeah, that'll be a good ride because it's drawn well. Yeah, and, and my wife tonight. And if I really have to stick my neck out, I think the ride home will be a little bit uh, longer than the one afterwards. <laughs> Thanks very much. Kim. Thanks, Nat. <laughs> there you go. KB Shay, never short of a word. And uh, I'll certainly be sending my video camera home with him. But um, my body had to say no at the end. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't me. Yeah, I was very. Uh, I enjoy the, we used to play 110% and work 120%, so uh, no, good fun, uh, I'm a nice bunch of guys, uh, all my assistant trainers, Nathan Cotson was assistant to David Payne, which I got him to uh, Mark de Kock, and Trevor Brown was working in Dubai, I got him over to Mark de Kock as well, so all good friends of mine, all good friends of mine today, uh, I don't have to answer them today anymore, I can greet them now and talk to them like a gentleman. The riding part, I've uh, done it for 38 years on a continuous basis and traveling around the world. Something that should never get out your system. When I see the big days, the July, the Hong Kong big races that we used to participate in, uh, uh, that is when I really, my heart, my heart feels sad. So I do miss the big stuff, yes. I was plagued with his back problems for years and years and got worse. And, and doctors and injections and cortisone injections and facet joints and injections and painkillers and it, it got to a stage where um, I had to go and have the scan and, and I was virtually told then and there, the guy said to me after the scan that you're going to have to have a back up and uh, that's going to be the end of your career. It was hard to accept um, but I was prepared for it as long as I could get rid of this nagging pain and everybody would be able to tell you back pain is something you don't want to have and I had it for so many years, it's, it, it was a hard thing but I did accept it and uh, you got to move on as you say. I was 52 at the age so I accepted it, I, I had a good career. It hasn't been hard work for me to get into it because as you know, everywhere you go around the world, everybody wants a piece of you because you're an international traveling jockey, trainer, horse, so they always want interviews and that. Um, I was never worried about the camera or anything. To be able to give the public the, 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 the knowledge about how a horse is looking, how it goes down to the start, um, is the right money on the horse or something, I think it's very important and, it's, uh, and I think it's good for racing that, that somebody that, with my experience, can, can give over and hopefully that um, the punter can win. If there's no punter, there's no racing. So if we can keep the punters there and keep them happy, 
I don't think the bookmakers are going to appreciate what I'm saying, but uh, the punters, for the punters, if I can, if they win, I win because I like to, whatever I'm tipping on the TV, I also like to have a couple of rand on as well. So uh, it's, I think it's very important. Will it be held strong? Yeah, um, Warren, uh, I put him on my left hand side of me because there is a bit of a down slope at Gravel, so I try and bring him down a bit. But uh, the long and short of it is that he is taller than me, so um, there's nothing we can do about that. But. Um, he always gets to the races with his swimming cap on, which uh, makes him look very nice. But um, yeah, if, um, if Warren's not talking, um, I'll try and get a word in. Uh, I love talking to the trainers, uh, all the guys I used to ride for, seeing the, uh, my friends, the, the jockeys, they're interviewing them, looking at the horses especially, I mean, once you've got them in your blood. It's just a, it's just a mixed package, it's just all a little bit of everything, it just makes it just, just a wow afternoon. <laughs>